Hello and welcome to Waltham Watches. No, I am not Kelly Hill. The beautiful <laughs> Kelly Hill is off today. Um, but with me is the beautiful John Peacock. And <laughs> My wife calls me beautiful all the time. You're a real beaut, you are. <laughs> um, so we have an exciting yes, show today. Yes, we do. We've today. got uh, two very nice guests, guests today. Uh, first up uh, on the docket is Matt Pappas. Matt's the president and, and CEO of a new company over in Woburn, Arc Point Labs uh, in Woburn, uh, starting a brand new business over there. And uh, we're happy to have uh, uh, Matt with us. Uh, Matt's a somewhat new member of the chamber, uh, and uh, it's always nice to meet some new people here uh, related to the Chamber of Commerce. Matt, can we open up by having you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for the opportunity to come and talk to you today. It's exciting to be a new business in Massachusetts and also be a new member of the Waltham Chamber of Commerce. I'm a longtime Massachusetts resident. Uh, I went to high school here, uh, graduated from the University of Massachusetts. You're uh, kidding, I did too. Oh, did you? Okay. A couple of years before you. Yeah, I think a little bit before <laughs> me. Uh, my first job was in downtown Boston working for a financial services company. I live in Arlington with my wife and two teenage twins, both of whom keep us uh, very busy. On your toes. And uh, yeah, absolutely. Sure. And I'm also an avid, avid Patriots fan, so I'm looking forward to the start of preseason in a few weeks. We like you already. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about ArcPoint? I sure can. Um, so ArcPoint is a nationwide franchise. They've got about 90 locations across the United States. Uh, my location, oh, sorry, each franchise is independently owned and operated. My location in Woburn offers a variety of forensic testing services, including drug and alcohol testing both for employers, uh, athletic organizations, schools, and individuals. For employers, we offer drug and alcohol testing, uh, pre-employment background screening. We also help companies write and implement their uh, workplace drug policies. Uh, mm -hmm. That's an important aspect of a company's business because those policies have legal implications. For individuals, we offer drug and alcohol testing as well. Uh, so if you're a parent and you have a child that you're concerned about with, you know, drug abuse, you can come to our facility and uh, have them do a safe and confidential drug screen so that you know what's going on. We also offer DNA testing in cases of paternity as well as immigration. Mm. Mm. So you started um, the business from scratch, but it's a franchise. Did you find that that was helpful in getting it off the ground? A absolutely. Uh, with franchises, you're not going into business by yourself. You've got the mm -hmm. support uh, uh, and infrastructure of the franchise company behind you. So there's certainly a risk with starting any kind of business, but with a, fr a good franchise backing you, less. it takes some of the risk out of the equation. Mm -hmm. and, and what motivated you to start the company? That's a great question. Um, I, I think I have to trace my earliest motivation back to my father, who was a pharmacist and a small business owner himself. Uh, he taught me a lot about how to run and operate a small business and the importance of hard work. Um, on a different level, I was also motivated by the drug abuse problem that we face in this state. Um, I had an opportunity recently to attend Governor Baker's uh, Opioid Addiction Task Force meeting and it's pretty clear that we have uh, an epidemic with regard to drug abuse in Massachusetts. And if my company in some small way can help be part of that solution, then that's my way of giving back. Okay. You're in a very competitive field. Uh, how are you gonna deal with that? So I think we have some natural advantages. Uh, uh, one of the advantages that we have is that we are independently owned and operated. We're local here in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. So I think the level of service that we can provide companies is higher than what you might see from a national company that doesn't have a, a local presence here. Mm -hmm. uh, we also uh, can process uh, drug screens pretty quickly through our facility. Uh, some of the national providers have shifted their focus to more of a clinical focus because the margins are a little bit higher there. And so drug and alcohol testing for them can sometimes be more of an, a nuisance than anything else and they get second priority when they go into those offices. Uh, in our case, drug and alcohol testing is number one priority so we can process people pretty quickly. Matt, I have a question for you. With the, as you said, the opiate um, issue is in the forefront. We read about it, we hear about it every night in the news. What advice would you have to parents? Can they, 
get like a testing kit to test at home? Do they call you and bring a sample? How do you get a, a sample from your kid that you might be ha thinking that uh, he or she might have an issue? Sure. And how do you handle that sort of thing? And what can parents get from you to record. help them resolve any issue they might have with right. you? Right. That, that wasn't in the question and answer. No, and that's, and and that's perfectly, question, isn't it? That's perfectly okay. And that's, <laughs> a, that's, a great, that's a great question. And I, I, I can answer it, I think, from two ways. As a parent, I think the most important thing is, is communication with your children all, all the time, sitting, mm -hmm. sitting down at the dinner table, talking to them, finding out what's going on in their lives. Turning off the electronics. Turning off the electronics, finding out who their friends sure. are. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's number one. Sure. Uh, from a, uh, an ArcPoint Labs perspective, there's a variety of different types of uh, drug and alcohol testing that we can perform. We can do a hair-based uh, drug test. We can do a fingernail drug test. We can do a urine-based drug test. Uh, that can be done with a kit at home. It could also be done in our facility uh, through one of the labs that we partner with. So there's a lot of different options for parents who are facing that potential problem. Thank you. Now, what types of companies and organizations uh, need drug testing and alcohol testing? Th that's a great question. I, I, I think just about any company can use, uh, can, can benefit from drug and alcohol mm -hmm. testing in their workplace. Uh, if you're a company with commercial vehicles over 26,000 pounds, you're required by the Department of Transportation to do drug and alcohol testing. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, companies that fall into uh, the category of a safety sensitive industry also typically do drug and alcohol testing, although they're not necessarily required to do that by law. Um, some of those industries include manufacturing, construction, the energy industry, just to name a few. Mm -hmm. um, we're also marketing our services to staffing agencies, municipalities, uh, law firms whose clients may need uh, DNA testing for paternity mm -hmm. or immigration. How about uh, police departments? Uh, is that a different issue? A absolutely. In some cases, police departments are separate from a separate structure from the the, the municipality. In mm -hmm. some cases, they're they're one and the same uh, HR organization, and typically, uh, emergency response like firefighting and police, as well as their recreation departments, um, typically do drug testing within the municipalities. What makes you different from? Um, we've heard the controversy over the state drug labs right. and that testing right. where people are dropping the ball and people are doing things that are just not um, just n not on, on the level. Yeah, not, and not proper standards. Yeah, yeah. So, so how do you, I know you don't compare to that, right. but are you ever called in by state, local officials, to do any? You know, we, we haven't yet. Uh, the, the vendors that we partner with, the lab vendors that we partner with are, are all national companies. They go through a very strict uh, and ongoing certification process to make sure that their lab standards are up to par. Uh, and so, you know, we've never had an issue with, uh, you know, a, a bad result coming back from the lab. Uh, uh, but certainly, you know, you've got to be aware of that and make sure that the results are, uh, uh, are appropriate. Yeah, one last question, or, or maybe not a last question. Mm -hmm. We may have more. In addition to drug and alcohol testing, what else do you offer for services? We just introduced a couple of new exciting services. The first one is a service that we offer to physicians who need to monitor medication in their patients. Uh, so, for example, if you're a doctor who has to prescribe a pain medication, uh, you can use this medication monitoring test. Uh, to make sure that your, your patient is both taking the pain medication that has been prescribed to them, and more importantly, they're not abusing that medication. Uh, so that's one of the new services that we just introduced. The other one is an exciting new service called ArcPoint MD, which uh, provides 24 by 7 access to U.S.-based board-certified doctors who can diagnose and treat a variety of different ailments. And we think that's going to be a really valuable service for both companies and employees who are trying to control their health care costs uh, and get and provide easy access to, uh, to doctors. Mm. What would you, uh, finally, we're down to the last two minutes, but what, okay. would you, what, would you, <laughs> <laughs> what would you advise, um, say, a small company that, that has a small number of employees, and are there any... Um, drug test on an annual basis do you recommend that they test 
randomly right. and any issues with employees not wanting to cooperate and right. feeling that their rights are of some sort of being R right. compromised? Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, uh, it, it all depends on the need of the company. Uh, the more, if you're in a safety sensitive industry, for example, you're going to do pre-employment drug screens. You're probably going to do random drug screens as well. The random element acts as a deterrent. Um, if you're a smaller employee, uh, you might only do you know, a background screen and a pre-employment drug screen, and that may be sufficient for your purposes. So it really all varies depending on you know, the needs of the company. Um, but that's certainly something that we can, you know, help customize for, for a company. Doctor. And people can just call you to find out how you can help them and, and set up an appointment with you. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, we're, we, can, we can help companies of, of any type. Okay, before we finish, uh, how about uh, telephone numbers to get in touch with you and also a website? So our website is arcpointlabs.com forward slash Woburn. And our phone number is 781-460-6020. And you're Matt Pappas, the and President and CEO. And my name is Matt and Pappas, I want to yes. thank you an awful lot for being with us today, and best of luck in your new venture. Thank you. It's scary, you, but Matt. best of luck. Thank you very thank much. You. It's thank been you. a pleasure thank speaking you. to both of you. Thank you very much. We'll be back uh, shortly with our next guest. Thank you. I think we're all set, folks, right? Suspect is white male, approximately 5'8", 5'10", medium build, 18 to 20. And we are back once again with a new guest, John. Yes, uh, we uh, have with us, we're lucky to have Seth Goodall. He's the uh, regional director, I believe, is, or regional administrator of the Small uh, Business Administration organization. Uh, welcome aboard, Seth, and we're happy to have you here. Why don't we start out by telling us a little about yourself and your background and uh, what you're all about. Sure. So I'm fortunate to oversee all the operations for the Federal U.S. Small Business Administration in New England, based out of Boston, but I am a Mainer, uh, born and raised up in Maine, and I came here. You don't uh, have an accent. I don't. Well, it's not too far <laughs> east. Not too far east. But uh, I was appointed by President Obama in July of 13. Mm -hmm. I've been serving since then. Prior to that, I actually served in the Maine Legislature in the State Senate. I also was involved as a lawyer in private practice in a small firm, as well as having an entrepreneurial background. I told you we had a heavy hitter here today. I guess That's so. That's great, fantastic. I'm impressed. <laughs> How long have you been with the S <laughs> SBA? So since July of 2013. Okay, you just, just explain that. Sorry about that. That's question. okay. Tell us about SBA and, and what, what you do. Sure. Well, most people think of the SBA as a lender, someone that provides uh, resources to small businesses. And that used to be the case in terms of we used to actually uh, loan the money. Now we do that in partnership with our lenders, uh, banks and credit unions throughout the Commonwealth and across the country. Uh, about $600 million last year in Massachusetts. <laughs> and what we do is we partner with banks and credit unions and we provide a guarantee uh, to backstop that loan. So. It's a loan that wouldn't be made through traditional resources uh, and tests at the bank, and uh, we give them that backstop, and then that cash gets out to the businesses on Main Street and across the Commonwealth and creates jobs and help businesses grow. In addition to that, we also provide resources through uh, counseling, that business know-how, that technical assistance through our partners, mm -hmm. the Small Business Development Centers, SCORE, which many people are familiar with. Both of which are members of the chamber. Absolutely. And also our women's business centers, and we also have a veterans outreach center as well. Mm -hmm. Then lastly, we also do federal government contracting. We want to make sure that at least 23% of all federal purchasing goes to small businesses across the country. If you think about it, that's almost a hundred billion dollars of an opportunity uh, for small businesses across this country. And we're actually excited for two years in a row we've hit that goal, which is really important. 
Are you finding that um, more and more women are starting businesses, small yeah, businesses? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've really seen steady uptick over the last uh, few decades in women entrepreneurs. In fact, we know when women are involved in leadership uh, in businesses, large and small businesses actually do better. Uh, and so we're working hard to provide them not only with the access to capital through our lending programs, uh, through counseling, through our women's business centers, but also through federal contracts, uh, making sure that they have the opportunity to level that playing field. Mm -hmm. So a uh, preference, in essence, is set aside for women entrepreneurs in federal procurement. Now I know about SCORE. SCORE has been a counselor at the Chamber of Commerce for a number of years, as has uh, SBDC out of uh, uh, UMass Boston. Uh, on the loan side of things, I know SBDC uh, does an awful lot more with regards to getting people ready uh, to go to a bank mm -hmm. uh, with regards to business plans and risks and those types of things. Uh, how does that in integrate with what, what you do? do you, are you affiliated with certain banks uh, or are you just an assistant organization to push these people in the right direction? Steer these people so we have many banks um, across the country and many here in uh, the Commonwealth mm -hmm. that we partner with. In essence, we sign them up to be our lenders. And depending on how active they are, some are more active than others, and they have streamlined um, programs within their bank or credit union based mm -hmm. on the blessing of the SBA. And we don't obviously have a preference from one bank or one credit union to mm -hmm. the next. But we do uh, sometimes, of course, align ourselves saying, okay, here is a suite of lenders that uh, work in this area, these industries or this geographic space. But our rule number one is always to encourage uh, borrowers, potential borrowers, to go back to their lender, their bank, their credit union, and work with them first. Uh, but with SBDC and SCORE and our other programs, they really do do that preparation, and they know the, the banking world very well. And as a result of that, we can often make those direct contacts, which go so far in business. Is it more difficult to get uh, a loan through the SBA, the guaranteed loan? Is it more involved? Is it harder? Is it more difficult than just going out and getting uh, a small business loan directly through a lender? So that's, I think, the reputation at times, that it's very cumbersome, very costly. Well, that's changed significantly over the years. Our SOP, in terms of government speak, our standing operating procedure, has actually shrunk significantly. Mm -hmm. We're actually launching an online service for our lenders to drive down the time and the costs. And now most lenders, these larger lenders, they're actually doing it on their own terms, and their approvals are almost instantaneous. So really, it's unfortunate. People still think of SBA loans taking a lot of time. Mm -hmm. It's really taking the time that the bank decides to take, not necessarily the SBA. And we're always striving to improve that. Obviously, there's exceptions to that rule, but one important thing in terms of the cost, we've actually s put our loans on sale, we often say. Loans under 150000 we put at zero fees because our fees hedge against the risk for the mm -hmm. taxpayer, mm -hmm. and our portfolio is at zero subsidy. And as a result of that, we've been able to reduce the cost. And what we've seen is a direct uptick in loans to underserved communities, veterans, entrepreneurs, minorities. So it's really worked. Great. I have a question here in front of me that confuses me. A lot of things confuse me. <laughs> People will tell you that all over the city of Waltham. Uh, what's the difference between a 7A program and a 504 program? I, I've never heard of that. Sure. Well, I mentioned government speak before. Yeah. Those numbers, I think, really uh, originate out of the passing of the regulation or the, okay. or the law to create the program. But really two different things. Our 7A loan is really that kind of that general purpose small business loan, mm -hmm. um, structured, very traditional business loan, whereas our 504 loan is more focused on real estate and fixed assets. And what it does is it allows the borrower to put only 10% down and amortize out that loan up to 20 years. Uh, and it, it's a real good partnership because we do it with not only the bank, but also with a nonprofit lender, a certified development company. So it allows uh, borrowers, small business owners, to get, some, uh, get a piece of real estate or equipment uh, often when necessarily the cash flow wouldn't allow through a more traditional loan or a 7A loan. The, um, the show that's on Friday night, one of my favorite shows of all time, Shark Tank. Um, I find it interesting because there are so many people who come in with these ideas that are maybe the craziest ideas that we would ever think about 
or conceive of and these people are actually starting companies. I'm sure you've probably heard a lot of those kinds of stories and one of which is Yankee Candle. Absolutely. Well, I have a four-year-old, so mm -hmm. I'm home on Friday nights, and I watch the show <laughs> often. Uh, I do, too. I enjoy it, and it really, the show gets us thinking about what it we does. need to know about your product, your service, the cost, the unit cost. Do you know everything about that space? Mm -hmm. I think it's really a valuable tool to get you thinking um, and lead entrepreneurs down a path where, like, i got to learn more. Yankee Candles, great story. Uh, Michael Kittredge, at the age of 14, was thinking about uh, being an entrepreneur, I guess, made a candle for his mother, and look where he has gone. And he's received yeah. SBA assistance. Other great companies, uh, Staples, uh, Ben and Jerry's, Green Mountain Wicked Coffee, Good. Wicked, Wicked Good, Good cupcakes, and now they're doing Wicked Good cookies, and Absolutely. in a jar, and and the shelf life is greater, uh, so they can ship them anywhere and not have to freeze them or anything. It's, it's great, really amazing. Great stories. At the SBA, we like to dream big but start small, and we really have a great opportunity. And often, our biggest challenge is making people aware of the opportunities uh, through the SBA and our sister organizations to provide resources. I've heard that same thing before. Um, not to be negative Nelly here, but I mean, you know, a lot of people come to SBA, mm -hmm. SCORE, SBDC. Uh, what percentage of these organizations uh, go on further on? Uh, and, and what percentage drop by the wayside? Well, and I'm not necessarily talking about companies that fail. I'm talking about people whose ideas just kind of peter out. I mean, John's right because there are a lot of a lot of people like on Shark Tank and that have a, a concept for a business, an idea for a business, but they're they're maybe not 100% committed, or they really don't know about the business, and then they come to you and say. I need some money, I'm going to start a business. There's got to be a certain amount of follow-up. How do you separate the people that yeah. really are serious about starting a business, uh, have a little bit of an idea of what they're doing before they're jumping in head first? How do you sort Because they're asking that? you to take a risk John, also. Sure. Right. Yeah, how do you sort that out? Absolutely. Well, last year in the Commonwealth, there was approximately about 25,000 counseling clients. So that's significant output yeah, by sure these is. volunteers at SCORE and our professional counselors at SBDC and mm -hmm. WBC. And they are very talented and they can work with these entrepreneurs, lead them down the right path. Sometimes they'll leave the appointment and say, you know, this isn't for me, but I'm so glad that I explored it before investing the capital or making their dollars go further or even succession planning. So it's hard to necessarily trace exactly mm -hmm. what the outcome is because you never necessarily know what the goal is of every entrepreneur. But they're there to provide guidance. And last year, uh, as a result of that $600 million in capital, that's about 5.4 jobs per million dollars we know that is created. So it has a real result. Mm -hmm. And these counselors, uh, I say they really kind of do business, uh, God's work for uh, small businesses. <laughs> they really yeah. do. But and it's it, free. And it, oh, That's mm -hmm. great. And, but in addition to the counseling, I'm sure the, as it's a consulting um, kind of session too, where the counselor is probably trying to see, is this really going to be the fit for that person? I see it when I consult with people who aspire to open a tea room and have no idea sure. what they're doing or so going into that business and have no clue and no real understanding of the commitment. Some of the best advice I think entrepreneurs get at times from uh, these counselors is uh, the, the tough advice, the hard advice. Yeah. Uh, no, that may not work, but have you looked mm. at taking uh, this approach? Or have you thought yeah. through X, Y, and Z? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That advice, whether we receive it personally or at business, it goes a long way in life. Mm -hmm. Well, I know they have to take this through the whole business plan situation into the financing situation. That's a tough task sometimes. Yes. Uh, people have. Mm set ideas on what they want to do and they don't want to be negative with them at all uh, if they can and you highly that. and you highly recommend a business plan i'm sure absolutely oh, yeah. and you gotta have one to go to a bank with right you do but people need to take a deep breath because sometimes they often hear business plan they log on they google business plan and a 75 page glossy document comes <laughs> up and that isn't necessarily what a bank is looking for <laughs> no sure <laughs> sure 
<laughs> and and once they start their business, like every five years or so, look at that business plan. Absolutely. See if you're going in the direction that you started out, and are you with your mission? And it keeps you focused. It keeps yeah. you focused and helps you grow. We've we've done an awful lot of talk about financing plans and and starting businesses and such. What else does SBA have to offer uh, fledgling businesses? I guess. Sure. Is the well, I think it's important to note here in Waltham and around this great region is there's so many innovative companies growing. We also have small business uh, uh, small business uh, entities that really look at investing in not only innovation and research, but also uh, investment companies looking at high tech, high growth companies. Mm -hmm. And it's a really an opportunity to provide them the capital uh, that they wouldn't necessarily find. And what we do is we backstop some of these funds at SBIC as well as provide R&D grants through the Small Business Innovation Research uh, Program, which really helps companies grow. And they're growing towards commercialization, so actually get their product out into the marketplace. And Massachusetts is a leader in that. So you know, we talked about contracting, we talked about capital and counseling, but we also have these other tools. And right now, a big push too is how do we help all of the small businesses across this country access the markets around the globe? Because most of the consumers, to no surprise, are outside the United States. That's right. And that's complicated. It's bureaucratic. Um, mm -hmm. There's some roadblocks, and people sometimes get frustrated. We want to be there to help them. Okay, why don't, why don't we finish up by asking a couple of questions. Uh, contact information on how to get in touch with SBA best? Or the best way is sba.gov. And if you want to get right to the Massachusetts page, sba.gov slash ma. And you don't want to give out your personal phone number, so we'll, <laughs> we'll bypass that, okay? I'm here to help. Hey, thank you very much thank for you. being with us. It's been very informative. I hope it's informative for the audience, too. Uh, we really appreciate it, and uh, best of luck. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. And, um, John, we have some exciting oh, things a couple coming of, up. A uh, couple of commercial announcements to the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the Chamber's annual barbecue is going to be on uh, Thursday, August 6th, uh, under the tent at Gore Place. Uh, go to walthamchamber.com to register if you'd like to be there with us. It's a great time. We generally draw a couple hundred people there. Uh, also, uh, on the community side, uh, concerts on the common on Tuesday nights, uh, each Tuesday night through the month of July and August. Uh, it's a great take. The mayor's office is doing their annual doo-wop uh, in the middle of August on a Saturday evening. Uh, that's a lot of fun. And Waltham Day is on September 12th this year. Uh, thank you very much, Sally, for pinch hitting. And if anybody is out there who has a small, medium, large sized business, then you'd like to explore membership with the Chamber, call 781 894 4700. And if you like a nice cup of tea, go to the tea leaf <laughs> on the top of Moody Street. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs> she owns the tea leaf. Excellent. <laughs>